Hi, everyone. How are you? Welcome. It is Wednesday night, and we're here for Shop Talk with Chantal. Welcome to the channel. We've got a lot to go over tonight. We're going to be covering some reviews of what we did last week. Hi, Mary. How are you? And the new releases that we've had during the course of this week, um, some things that are coming up, and hi, Ara. And then we're going to head over to... Um, Nicole's channel because this evening she has a live um, kind of interview chat with Alicia, the fanciful flamingo. So that's going to be super exciting. Sorry. Oh, look, my own channel is telling me I'm live. What do you know? So hi, Maureen and hi, Dee. How are you guys? Meredith, welcome. Wow, how was everybody's week this week? Did you get a lot of stitching done this past week? I, I did some. I didn't get a ton. Um... We did a ton of other things, so that's okay, I guess. Let's um, get going because we don't have a lot of time because we don't want to miss Nicole's interview, and I want to go over some things and new things that are actually... I've got more new things coming. Okay, the first thing, though, I did get some questions about this cold turkey gray <laughs> grow out. I know I had mentioned it at the first of the year that, you know, uh, on a quarterly basis, maybe we touch base on this. And so far, uh, it's getting really thick in through here, I guess. And I think when we first started, it was right about here. Now it's maybe to here. It is a slow process. It's kind of a painful one, but, you know, it is what it is. So we're just going to keep moving forward. And I, Shelby talked to me about, um, like, you can go in and have this part also colored. And not this. I don't know. Have any of you done that? Did you, who did cold turkey and who did, you know, just, I know Renee's. Hi, Renee. Your, yours is gorgeous. Her cold turkey girl, it was amazing. I loved it. I don't know how anyone else did it, but, you know, or maybe you haven't, you know, you let us know what's going on. But this is where I'm at. There's the update on the girl out. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, this week, as far as stitching goes, let me take you over to the camera because what I've worked on is I started getting into, um, oh, okay, let's see. We got Renee chiming in. It took her 16 months to grow it out. Okay, I'll buckle down. And um, Holly, she did hers culture. Hers is beautiful as well. Aura, yours is also beautiful. Everyone's is so pretty. They're gray grow outs. And that's what's really inspired me to just go ahead and do it. Um, but anyway, this is what I got started this week. I'm really excited about this. This has gone pretty quick because like I said, I didn't have a lot of stitching time this week. And so I picked up this um, stitch. It is the Summer Basket from Hands On Design. And you may notice here that this is... Um, my printer needs to be, this is a PDF. So I do carry these charts in my shop. However, I sold out of summer baskets. So I went over to Kathy's shop and bought the PDF. <laughs> so anyway, so I can get started on it. So that's where I have that. The reason why I'm doing this, and I think many of you are doing this as well, is that Nicole Spore has a stitch along coming up to create a Biscor new out of the triple play charts that are done from hands-on design and when I say charts you've probably seen these too but I'll bring these in they are a series and we've got the autumn ones and if you're watching Nicole's channel she's already showed an example of this as a biscorn you the winter basket and the spring basket I'm doing this summer, and so the first one I started with is this one right here. No, no, I'm sorry, this one up here, and I've gotten, you know, just around the corner here is, this is my, I should mark my top, shouldn't I? This is my top. Oh my gosh, you guys, I didn't even think about that. Anyway, I should mark my top on this, so I've got my top. I need to bring in here and put in some white and white in here, and then keep going around and finish it off. The other ones, I think I'll go ahead and do these as well and then figure out what I want to stitch for the bottom. The fabric that I chose to stitch this on is 16 count um, driftwood. 
from Fabrics by Stephanie. This is the same called for fabric as the Spring Folk um, chart that's also by Hands On Design. So I had some of this and I really like the way the white is um, popping here. I am using DMC floss for it. They're great colors. All of it is going really smooth and I'm excited to learn how to do a biscornio. The reason, then I'm going to go right into like a new item that's coming because one of the reasons and something that inspired me. So what's, what's going to happen is follow Nicole's channel April 17th. She's starting her, bis, uh, her Biscornu stitch along. And what she's going to do is kind of show us inspiration, ideas. She's done a lot of work into it. And then at the end, we get to see the training or the tutorial on how to put them together. I'm so excited. The reason why, too, because when I want to stitch them and I want to learn how, but I also created a couple things for us that we might want to use for risers for our biscornios. These are cut on the laser, a couple of circles. We've got a scalloped one and the top one that you'll glue together. But the other thing that's really cool about them is we've got them on these cute feet. So you actually have risers to put your biscornios on. Now I'm going to bring you back over here because here they are from this angle. Now I've got other new things coming. So what I've decided to do since new things are repeatedly showing up and I've got things to bring because I'm just having too much fun and finding great things to make. And I feel like I'm going to do the next drop or the next launch or, of new items will be on the 15th of the month. So I'm going to start showing you the items and giving you sneak peeks of what's coming and how to use them. It'll give you a chance to like actually think about what you might want to do with them or how you could incorporate them into your things. I know we all have plenty of things to be making. So this way you'll get some heads up and some notification of when things are coming. There's a few things coming. This is going to be one of them. I have a sample here. Lynn, last year, um, Teresa Colgate was at a retreat here in Lansing, and she had a Biscornu as the project for the class. And this was the one that Lynn went with me on, and she made this. Now, this is a five-inch style Biscornu. I just had her bring it in so that we could talk about what it actually is and what it looks like. And I thought I'd show it to you resting. I think it, we're going to do it this way. You know, resting, oops, let's do it the other way. It's so hard to tell because they're so cute. But there, it would be like resting on a little trivet or riser in your display. There we go. Got it. You can flip it, the two sides. Aren't they cute? How many of you are stitching along with Nicole for the Biscornu? Oh, yeah, we've got the girl. Yes. Um... I'm just looking at some of the other things. Oh, so many of you have done, have the gray hair. It's awesome. I'm glad. Oh, thanks, Lisa. She says the center baskets are looking good. And Jenna is starting hers. And she's in the middle of the size fabric I'm using is a 16 count D. And hello, Kathy. Welcome. Okay, Sherry's on the struggle bus with the winter. Um, yeah, I went ahead and started with summer one, it looked, I'm going to be honest, it looked easy so, <laughs> or easier. And I'm like trying to get things stitched and I wanted to have fun with it. So I went ahead and did it that way. Um, so there we go. We've got some risers. Oh, okay. Great. Great. Everyone's planning to join in. Here's um, another view of what the top, isn't that the cutest thing? Now this is not available um, from Teresa at this point, but there's a lot of Biscor news and things out there. So we've got some new risers coming, and I was excited to share that with you guys tonight. And like I said, start giving you some heads up, right? The other item that I was able to finish, we talked about it last week, and I shared it with you, was the Robin Pickens Robin, and this is from her series of the seasonal couriers. There are four in this series. Let me just bring it up so you can see all four. You might have already seen these. I'm sure you have. This is just a postcard I had that showed all of them. So I thought I'd show this for you. 
the colors in these are so bright and vivid and fresh and I really, really enjoyed stitching the first one. This is done on a 28 count and I stitched it on the new color. Um, oh shoot, I just drew a blank. Oh, you guys, I think I talked about it last week too when I drew a break. It's from Cedar River Designs. It's their newer color. It is 28 count for this. Um, when I think of it, it'll come to me. But the, and I will tag, I didn't tag Cedar River in the comments, but my white didn't show up as great. So maybe I needed a little darker fabric, but I'm still thrilled and had a great time with stitching this. So it's done now and I will work on getting that fully finished. I have just really enjoyed those. I have tagged in the description box below where you can get those. Now, I have been in touch with Robin and have ordered the charts for our shop so that we'll have actually all of her charts. I'm just going to get stocked with all of Robin's charts because there's the sunshine one that I want to do. I love that one. I think it's so cute. And, um, but she's on vacation right now. So we're going to, um, as soon as she gets back, she'll get that into us. But in the meantime, if you're, you know, chomping at the bit to get going on the Robins or anything else like that from her, what I did was I tagged Fat Quarter Shop because they've got some PDFs of her charts. So you could go and uh, download the PDF of the Robin and then later, you know, we'll have it in our shop as well. The charts for the um, Biscornews for the hands-on design. I will show you once again. We have we have these three. I know that's kind of shiny, but we have these three in our shop right now. We are sold out of the summer basket. I will be re. It's not overcast. It's um. Do you know it's um starts with an S. Anyway, if someone wants to look it up, <laughs> check out Cedar River and we'll get into it. It starts with an S. I know that. Um, but I'm sold out of the Summer Best Spindrift. That's it. Yep, you're right. See, it's Spindrift is the fabric. But I linked Hands On Design um, has these as PDFs as well. So go over and get them all from Kathy right now. I'll get a restock going and get the get this cart up to date as well so that we because you know like I said I'm over there buying pdfs from her myself so all right that's so I've got a new start and that was my finish for this week um I've got some other plans to do some other stitching we'll see how it goes I wanted to do some reviews um uh, where do I get the magnets and washers you know what magnets I have and this is in my description box this evening, I actually did remember to share my Amazon shop with you guys because I'm trying to populate the Amazon shop with items that I'm not going to carry in my own shop, but I know you guys are always looking for them. So when I find something, I'm going to put the in there. The magnets I use, um, sorry, the magnets I use are listed in my Amazon shop and the link is in the description box. So you'll see those. Let's talk about a few other things we've got down there as well. So last week we talked about um, the new item on the ledge and that's why I thought I'd show you this one once again here because of a couple reasons. The things that I purchased, I didn't have these in last week when we talked. These are some nice felt balls and I did get these from Amazon and I ordered in a few different colors. This royal blue color is really pretty. I also ordered these wood beads that could be painted and I like mixing them up together. Now what you're seeing in the shelf right now is one package this size and I've linked that in the shop so that you can see that. The sample paintbrush here is um, Petal Pusher. I've got to label these better, but this is Petal Pusher is the color that I painted it in. And I just had picked up a number of the felt balls from the shop so that I could do a combination things and put them together. And then it's kind of a fun way to fill the bottom of the bowl or the ledge because I also had this one that I shared as an example this last week because I showed the blue one with the pillows as a pillow rest. This one I'm showing now with Tiny Town. This is done, um, I believe, on 28 count so that you can see what a Tiny Town will fit like on here. 
and I want to show you also the combination of the felt balls in here. So this is two packs of the felt balls plus some of the heart wood charms that are just kind of rested and kind of fit inside the ledge. All right, Carrie is asking, where did I purchase the fabric using for my Biscorn? You, you can't seem to find it. If you are looking for, if you're looking for this fabric, this is um, from Fabrics by Stephanie. Let me link her as well. She's not linked right now, but Fabrics by Stephanie. And the color, just making a note, guys. So let me, this color is called Driftwood. So, oh, your cat had a field day with those felt balls. Sure enough, right? It's so fun. There's just loads of different colors, and it's a good way for if you are looking to interchange. But like I said, that is two of the packets in the bottom of the thing. So the other thing that I found this week, because this is a brand new chart in our shop, daisies came in from stitching with the housewives and I was measuring it out and both rabbits, the new, get it over on this side. There we go. The new word swap. This one's for May and this one was for April. These will fit on the top of, on the ledge. So this size is the same size as the word swaps. So I was thinking that would be a really fun addition to, um, you know, stitch up and have some fun with that by changing out things in the bottom and, you know, putting fun things in and seeing how those progress through the year. Because this is a series then that just kicked off and just started. So you can do these and make these interchangeable on the back of your... <laughs> I'm in trouble today. On the back of your, on the um, the ledge. And when you do that with the wood pieces, we've maybe talked about this before, and you're using the rare earth magnets, you would put one magnet on the back side of your piece and then the other magnet on this the back of your stitch. And then mag it will magnetize right through that way. That way you're not clicking it magnet to magnet. You don't have to put the magnet on the front. Just make sure that you, you know, you don't have that resist. You know how mag you got to make sure you're right, you're in the right direction. So that's a review for the, um, on the ledge that is available in the shop. It's there now. I just didn't have those things in yet. So they came like in the midst of, you know, everything's on order all the time, kind of getting the things through. So they came in the midst of all of that. The other, oh shoot, I forgot something. Again, you guys, I gotta go get this. So I'm going to let, okay, I'm gonna walk away. There's things behind me you can look at while I go get something because there's something super cute that I discovered. One moment. I'm back. <laughs> I literally fuss over getting ready for like an hour and a half, if not all day for these things. And I still forget to bring things. Anyway, this was something I really wanted to show you because so this week, or the last couple of weeks, you know, we've been playing with putting feet on. I know someone had asked about like feet for the bottoms of things, right? So we were playing with feet and I got, I had gotten these. I had those in my stash and I've tried them on those. And I like that size. I also had ordered, and I got these linked in the Amazon shop before. I also had ordered these in as well, this tiny little size. I felt they were a little too small for the bottom of the riser, but then I was goofing around and put them on the bottom of the on the edge display. And oh my gosh, it's so cute. Would you look at that? That's so adorable. Isn't that cute? Let me put it on this so you can see it standing up by itself. Here's another one. Okay. Huh! I think that's 
so adorable. So if you already have an on the edge display, all you need to do is pick up a bag of these little tiny finial feet and you can just glue them right to the bottom as little risers and kind of elevate them. What do y'all think? I was like thrilled. I thought they were so cute. So I brought both in to show you on the edge is something we've had. It just sit, has sat flat. It is sold this way. We don't have the feet here, but if you want to add the little feet to it, just grab them from the Amazon shop and you can pop them on the bottom. So should go on very easy. That was a little update. See, I just, I had this in the back and I really wanted to share that with you because I thought it was super precious. And so thank you for um, asking about adding little feet. So, oh, okay. We've got some more joining Turk things. Great that her stitch along. So while I was gone, I had another thing. You might've seen it back here that I wanted to show you guys. Let me grab this piece is in development right now. So I'm at the, I'm at the edge. Oh my word. Those are so, oh yes. Aren't they so precious? The little tiny feet. All right. I am so excited this came up this week. Now, I've mentioned it before that I work with and follow a number of other laser file creators within like the laser cutting community. And what they do is these artists, they, um, they develop and they design files that as a laser cutter, we can like purchase as commercial use and we get the files and we can create. They're awesome sometimes. Sometimes they don't always work perfectly for us. This piece, however, I think is the bomb.com. So I thought I would get it so that we could all work on something like this. Now, what I've got it set up for right now, this is a shaker box display. The display itself is pretty beefy. And right now I just have these resting on it. But if I move, if I make the dots stick out a little further, that would tuck behind it but you could also just tie a regular bunting across the top if you'd like and do that. Now what it has, if I can do this, is this four inch edge to it. This is one of our um, basics collection that I have that cute Teresa Kogut stitch on. And then this is just the plant from Hobby Lobby. But here is the entire shaker box. I love this. I love it so much. It's going to have so much potential to it. Now this I am still, like I said, it's still in development because we have right now a four inch shelf to it. I believe we're going to need one with a little bigger shelf, right? And it might need to be a little taller. There might be more dots and things that could come into the edge or more, you know, dowels and things on the top. But look at what, you could put a stitch here if you want. You could put other stitches here if you want. You could interchange this if you'd like. You could also hang this on your wall this way. And then have things that hang down from it and set something on the top. There's a lot of possibilities. It's a very versatile piece. It's also an extremely stable piece and high quality. It really is because I'm going to tell you something when we'll get more into this. So that's why things are in development and we're going to be launching it on the 15th with the proper measurements that are going to work just perfectly for us, right? But what it is, is it's multiple pieces. So these pieces on the back, you'll see the backside is solid. Each one of these shaker pieces, the beadboard look in the back, is a separate piece so you paint them all individually and can distress and put them on there. That will give you so much um, user, it'll be it'll be error proof, you know, like you're gonna be able to paint however you want, distress, and then we glue them all together. I'll show you right there. See how that's sandwiched and layered together? Also, because of that, this is been this is like super heavy duty piece. The bottom as well has an extra layer board on the top, and this is all out of our maple wood. So you will receive all of those strips back there will have grain to them. So if you choose to mape it, um, mape it stain it, it's really going to pop and bring those out. It would look great in white. It'll look great in black. It's just a really functional piece. I'm just thrilled to bring it to you guys. And like I said, we're going to probably launch that on the 15th of the month and then work with some ways to 
build it, create it, different ideas for designing around it, and how you can use it in your decor. So that's that. And then, of course, now that we have the paints and the supplies in, we will be working with the paints that we have in our shop so that I can show you exactly step by step on painting it and working with it. What do you think? Are you excited? I'm really excited about it. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, maybe you guys aren't, but I am. And so I was thrilled to see that. And I'm thrilled to see that we can um, work with it and create like a nice piece of furniture within our home, like decor, home decor that we can create and then build these great looks. So, oh, I see that you guys like it. It's adorable. Yes, Robin, it can hang. Now I'm going to bring it back over here because I'm thinking that for hanging it, because it is a pretty heavy piece, I would probably put those hooks, like if you're hanging it this way, I'd put the hooks that attach back here and come up and then, you know, like hang them through that, if that's making sense. But I will grab some hooks and have my husband play with that too, so he can show us how to hang. He's my hanger guy. So we'll have that going for us as well. Let me put these over here back away. So that was just so exciting. The th other thing that did show up in the shop this week too on Monday is we did launch the paint. A lot of the paints are already sold out. We've got more of them on order and they're coming. No worries. Okay. So I can show this. How are we doing on time? Okay, we're good. We're good because we got to get over to watch the interview, right? We don't want to miss out on those guys. I'm going to check for just a moment to see about, um, Kristen says, yes, every holiday season, it would be a new piece. Oh, wouldn't it though? It's just going to be fabulous. Um, I think it's going to be a good class piece too, because I think we need to put together like a tear tray class, the shaker box class, and classes where we can build something that, you know, you kind of, for me, that gives me kind of a way, direction on how I want to stitch as well, like kind of building the collection and putting like a recipe, you know, like a putting it all together. It's going to be fun. We're going to have a good time with it. So that's coming. We're going to start playing with it. You're going to see a lot more with it. I've got some stitches that already fit onto there, but then we'll do some more because even like the Robin Pickens one might like on a stand fit right in there and then you can embellish around it and put different things anyway we'll keep we'll keep moving on because we could be probably talking about that forever now the next thing do you have any questions about any of those things okay did you launch the bags bags let's talk about bags i are you talking about these robin the immodest bags let me bring these in the bag that launched was this particular bag right now it is the largest version of our this denim tote bag with the leather handles this is available for pre-order right now in the shop if you are interested message me or like when you purchase it message me or email me or something if you want us to get a quote for you on getting your monogram um monogram put on it because you know i've got local friend here that does all of this monogramming and I can have it done before it leaves if you want that done. Otherwise, you know, no worries. It'll just head out the door to you. So these are on order. They're coming in. We did a pre-order with those. I haven't put the smaller one on yet because I didn't have confirmation from the company what they had in stock. And so I didn't want to oversell it if they weren't able to fulfill. They are good on the small size. So I'll be adding the small size into the shop so that can be ordered as well. And I'll give you um, let me see. I'll, let me just stand back so I can show you a good idea for size. This is the small one. The leather handles, it is washable, very functional. Let me put a project bag in here because I think that really we're all, you know, familiar with project bags. This one is from Starry Owl. So this fits right inside just of the small one, like perfectly. So that's small in this tote right here. The larger size obviously fits many. I'm also able to put in the bottom of this, I'm able to put the um, train case that I picked up and showed you. I also have one of the little neat, you know, the little cases that come from Hobby House. 
um, those fit in here as well. So yes, those are available. Let me just get that small one in the shop for you guys later tonight. I just needed to get confirmation from the company to make sure. They're from Immodest. They're fantastic. I found them originally last year when I went to market in the summer of last year and have just been like loving it. And so then I knew it was time to just share with you guys. So if that answers all that, great. Hi, Nicole. We're all getting ready to come and watch you pretty soon. It's so exciting. Um, let's talk about the floss organizers. <laughs> this has been a blast, you guys. They're so great. They're starting to arrive. And so we're going to get starting to ship them out. I'm going to take you over here to this camera because we're going to talk about exactly what the organizers are all about and how they're coming. One moment. Let me start with... What is the sample packs? The bags are listed under, um, drawing a blank, East West Tote. Look for a tote on there. Um, okay. Hive rules for stitching. Cheryl, I'm glad you asked. That's going to, let me just come back. I do have a I do have a rules board. All right, the rules board is also a large board, but since we're into the large things right now, and we got to put some great things, some great basics, I'll share it with you next Wednesday or throughout the week. I'll start sneak peeking the board for the rules, and it'll be the launch for the fifteenth as well. It it's time. It needs to be. I you guys need a need a rule, so we'll put that on there as well. And then the big one, we've got some other big ones coming. The Annie's Keepers. These floss organizers are just amazing. I'm so excited. They're available to order in the shop right now. We've got the pre-orders going on, and it's been just going like gangbusters, right? This is what the um, drops look like. They have this really nice little groove in them right here which allows for them to fit into the storage system. Let me get that in there. If I move over there, just like that and snap, right? Now there's a couple of different storage system ideas and I'm showing you now this week, we introduced it last week and now I wanna show you exactly the packs and things that are coming. This, I hope you can see that okay. This is what's called a sample pack. This is linked down below. There are 10 keepers with labels, one project slide, and one storage slide. This is about 10 bucks, somewhere in that price range right now. And then you've got instructions. This is a great set if you want to just get uh, give it a try, right? And the storage slide is the one that looks like this with the little hanging file thing. The project slide does not have that. So this is one that you would just slide all of them on like if you were kidding up a project and you were going to put that into your project bag you could do that and then you have 10 of the drops the stickers that come in this are the white there we go the white um, dots this is the stickers that come with the system the color stickers that you see me showing those are from the company Pip and Chip on Etsy. I'm going to show those to you as well. And Pip and Chip's site is listed below. So I've purchased those separately, but they do make those for, they say they call them the Annie's Keepers. So they're made to fit perfectly on this. Carrie is saying that she did do make her pre-order and she can't wait to get the items. Oh my goodness, yes. They are starting to ship in. As soon as they arrive, we will get them out the door and on the way to you right now. In stock, we have the sample packs in stock. I think we have about 20 of these right now, but more are on the way. So if, you know, like if you have an order for something like that and we have it, it's going right out. The next set I want to show you is what's called a starter pack. The starter pack comes with the project rods or what are we calling these? Project slides. Sorry, let me get this. You get four project slides. And what you'll notice is the project slides do not have the hook on them to hang them in the file cabinet. So this is more of a project kit up situation. And 
not a storage. It is storage too, but it's not going to hang, right? So in this set, you're going to get 50 of the drops plus the stickers. You get a, a four inch ring. Let me show you. This is like what it looks like on the ring. So that's 50. That's what 50 of them looks like. And then you get four of these slides. They go on then like this. So you could slide all of them right on and then do, you know, like this is for your project and then pop that right into your project bag and you've got them all. But you can reorganize them however you want so that, you know, it's all in one piece. Do you see how that clicks in there? Let me show you one more time. So this is how it's set up. You can slide them in from here if you want, but you can also, if you like, you don't want to take all these off, you can grab the middle one and just pull it out. And then to put it back in, it takes a little bit, but let me, it just, go. Oh, let me get it going here. Oh, from the edge, there. So that way you don't have to, like if you have a bunch, you know, does that make sense? So right, there we go. So that is the starter pack. If you're looking for, just, you know, you want to give it a try and see what it's like. Let's say you're like me. <laughs> And I'm kind of a freak, but this is the, basically, I'm going to say the getting it all kit. So this is a storage pack with 300 keepers with 20 slides and labels. So you've got all of these slides for, the, with the hangers, you've got 300 of these bad boys and you do have stickers, the white stickers. Now, if you want the color stickers that look like this. That's what I want to show you next here. All of these things are pre-order items on the site. Does anyone have questions? How many fit on a slide? This is a good question. I think about 10 is what I've been estimating that would fit on one slide. The Pippin Chip stickers, these come on Etsy. It is linked in the description box below. The stickers well, labels, I should call them. They are vinyl labels. And you can see, I have set my classic color works already up. And so now these are the ones that I don't have in my stash. And it's nice that it comes in this cute little folder. So now I have some place to file my extras and I don't have to worry about where's the rest of those labels, right? So that's nice. And then the weeks I haven't done yet, but I thought I'd show you how nice and vibrant the stickers are. And they stick very, very um, securely onto them. The white stickers that come in it also are permanent. They do not come back off, so they stick really perfect as well. And ours asks, what size the file cabinet would they fit in? They fit in just a regular size file cabinet. Um, that size, well, let me show you one here. I have, let's see if this, if we can bring this in, kind of. No, let me show you from the top. Too big. This is um what is it it's a super stacker file box it's 14.5 by 10.4 so like regular holds letter size hanging files is what it says here we go i got this just at um office max just so that i had some place to kind of start and you can see it's got like a whole bunch of them down there in the bottom and then this is the extra system showing so far, I've got 310 ready to go. <laughs> He's in there all by himself. So that's um, just to give you an idea. That's a good question. Thank you for asking that and showing that. Now, I am going to grab myself a filing cabinet, though. I would like a big filing cabinet for in here so that I can put them all inside a filing cabinet because I also have... These have not made it into the shop yet. I'm still working on these so that we um, get them exactly right for you guys too. But the clear um, acrylic pieces that I switched over from wood, I, I got to buy more acry acrylic basically. So I'm going to get more acrylic in. and then. But these I went ahead and put, is that focusing? What to do? These are those classic color work stickers. So what I did was I organized my classic color works on the large floss drops that we have. And, um, and the reason why is because I have multiple skeins of a lot of the colors and the size hole on this is one inch. Maybe I'll put it on this. Here we go. 
go. It's hard to show clear things. And then multiple skeins will fit on there. So those are also coming too, but I just went ahead and used those same. Let me show you. I went ahead and used the same pip and chip stickers, but see how I've got like, you know, in baking tin, I had four skeins of that. And so this just allows me to store them this way. And I'm thinking that what I'm gonna work on then and do is inside my filing cabinet, when I get that to work it, you know, I'm gonna have multiple drawers. So one of them, I might actually take these and just hang this inside there from the ring. And I'm putting these in alphabetical order um, it's just an idea and a start. I'll keep you posted and updated as that progresses and what I'm doing with that. But it's using the same stickers because I really liked them and I thought, oh, that's kind of fun. So use those same stickers for that. Okay, the stickers aren't cheap, but boy, they are super high quality. Yes, they are. They, you know, they're not a bad price. The shipping, you know, because they're coming from the UK. So the shipping is a little bit, but I love them. I actually ordered a second set of the... Um, Classic Color Works, um, so I can make a set of the the Annie's Keepers as well for my other ones. Just because, but yes, the labels are fantastic. And Jenna is saying that she does have those labels with her current system, and she loves them. So, yeah, it's really easy to see. She says that she can see at a glance um, which ones she has in her stash. Hi, April. Welcome. Okay, I'm just checking back. How many keepers fit on the slide? That's about 10. So, yep, we've got new pieces. Yep, Cheryl, no problem with that. We'll get that going. All right. What is the thread stand behind her? Oh, let me show it to you. I'll grab it. This is, um, I picked this up at the Antique Mall. And it's a, I don't know what it is. Look at it. It's like maybe a drying rack or something. But I hung my classic color works for now on this, it does, these are those hooks I was talking about, like that could hang on the other thing. It does have those, I have two of these. They were just downstairs in my stuff, you know? So I was putting them on there. I might put them on the wall or I might stick, I don't know. You know, it's a work in progress. You guys know me, it's always changing. Always mixing it up. But I, you know, I'm starting to land on things that I know for sure that I like. Okay, do we have any other questions? Hi, Teresa, how you doing? I've got one more thing to talk about because I got this question with paint and we were talking, they were talking about, um, I want to be able to show you guys colors and things. And when things come up as we paint them, give you ideas of which paints that I used. And I will try to start doing photographs as well so I can link them in where the product is on the website. These little guys are called seasonings. And they are the new charms that we put in the shop. They are two layers. So for instance, the sunshine, we've got two layers. They are also in the maple. So you can stain them or paint them if you like and distress them. And then you just paint them. I like to do layers like this because it's just kind of a cute little classic way of painting and easy to blend colors and do what you like. But I thought I'd show you the colors that were used to do each one of these with our new paintbrush um, styles here. Now remember, the paints are coming in. When you receive them, you will get an eight ounce sample size. This is the color Little Black Dress. You will also receive one of our little paintbrushes so that you can paint your own um, sample set so that you can keep those on hand and refer back to what your colors are and blending and things like that. So the little tiny flower is painted in two colors. We have, the first one is the petticoat pink and kissing booth. So the dark pink is kissing booth, the light pink is petticoat pink. The sunshine was painted using the beadboard for the white and queen bee is the color on the top. The snowflake is painted using sea glass is the base on the snowflake and then beadboard was the white that was used, so this beadboard. 
and the acorn was three colors. We have, I'm just getting used to names still, Summer Crush is our orange, Sandy Blonde, this is a fantastic, fantastic color, Sandy Blonde, and Weathered Wood is the dark wood up there. I will list these down below, but if you, actually I should have shown the names on here, but anyway, I'll let me list the names below and you'll see the colors for each one of those. But someone had asked like what the colors were, so I just wanted to show you, and we can keep going over colors and sharing colors as we go and as things progress. The um, color I showed earlier, these the little guys that I painted, these are done in little black dress for your information. Now let's check our time. Oh, we're doing good. We're doing good. All right, I'm pretty sure that is wrapping up the information I have for you today. Like I said uh, before, with heading over to Nicole's channel, check out her Biscorn You Stitch Along. These are coming on the 15th, the little stand so that you can make these. These will come with the feet. You don't have to buy feet to get these. These will come with feet. And I did, I don't, I ordered a bunch more feet, you know, but I did put a link. So if you want to put these onto other things you already have, that might be handy to go get links. They didn't come in in time for tonight, so I'm like, I'll just run down to Hobby Lobby, you know, and grab some of these little feet and show you guys. Would you look at this ridiculousness, you guys? I go down there. There is one set down there at Hobby Lobby, one packet. But look at the issue that I have with this one packet. There's only three in there. <laughs> I'm just like, what am I supposed to do with three? I still bought it. But <laughs> anyway, I was like, what? what am I doing with three? So... Go grab a whole big pack of them if you have. But like I said, when you buy this, it comes with them. So you don't have to. Oh, let me show you two. I'll show you how they work. Because I I think I have it. Maybe not. Maybe it's over here. Again, I'm with all the stuff. I have it. Okay, maybe I don't. The bottom of it where I have these um, glued on on the bottom, no worries. You can't see them now because I've glued on top of it, but there are score lines underneath here to make it perfect for being able to place for placement of your feet on your piece. So I just thought I'd bring that up too, that I put, you know, the score lines are there to make it easy peasy so that you don't have to go, oh no, because like if they weren't there, my feet would be like all over the place. Like, trust me, they would. Okay, we got a question here from Peggy. Um, are there one or several black paint colors? There are two black paint colors, little black dress and black velvet. Little black dress is the darker of the two. So it's like jet black 310 color, like DMC. And the, um, black velvet is a little grayer, but honestly, you probably, you wouldn't know the difference. You just don't want to paint one on top of the other thinking you got that color. That That's the only time you're ever going to see the difference. You're probably going to see black, black. It's going to be black. But I got both colors, so they're there. But if you're looking for black, black, little black dress is your color. So, oh, good. I'm glad. Oh, thanks, Deb. That's nice. <laughs> she says, you are so awesome. So cute. And then Kristen wants to build a whole collection of the brushes. Right? They're so fun. My, my grandson was in and he was coloring them. And I was thinking... Man, I wish you could just paint them for me. That would be easy peasy, right? Um, I believe that's what I have for you this week. I look forward to working on new things and sharing more things with you for next week and bringing you some other products. That guy back there, I'm going to work on developing it. So we've got it a little bit more. I think, like I said, six inch shelf is the way to go. And Robin's asking, oh, after you paint, what finish do you use? The finish that I use is a deft spray. It is also inside my Amazon shop underneath. There's a category that's um, like finishing supplies. That's where the little sanding tool I have listed. Stain pads are listed there. The deft clear coat spray is listed there. And I just decided to do a shop so that I could help you guys find it all at one time. And then if I find more wonderful things, I'll stick it in there as well. Some paint brushes that you can get are in there. All of these things um, are inside there. The deft is not a zero VOC. It is a spray. So you'll want to do that probably outside or something. But I use a satin finish. Uh, you can use waxes. I've also listed in there. I don't know if they have it anywhere. From the Real Milk Paint Company, there is a paste 
that you can put over things that will give it a good finish. That's still a great product. I have that as well, and I've recommended it before. So if you've already purchased that, you can keep using that. That'll work great with the paints too. And then there's wax. The paint brand is a furniture paint brand, but I love it for crafting. So that's why we've brought it in. The clear coat wax is also really good and fantastic. And I think we might grab some, but I want to test it out first. The, the concern I have about the clear coat wax would be is for actually gluing something to it. I don't want wax to create some sort of resist where the glue is not going to stick and it's just going to pull the paint back off or something like that. I, I want to test that out before I say go with wax. So deft is the clear coat and that's what is on, um, you know, this piece right here. I just sprayed it. So what I did was I, I actually put this together first. All right. Um, with this and you, when you order these, you will get the instructions on which sides to put together first. And the, um, on the ledge comes with the same instructions. So you might see the small scale, but it's the same concept, right? The way I do it though is I put it together first so that I can clean up any glue. Then I paint it. I know that, you know, some of the thought, sometimes I will paint the pieces first and then put it together. But for these pieces, I put them together first. That way I can clean up any glue that's spills out over the edge because if I paint it the pieces first and then try to put it together, the glue is going to get all over the paint. And I'd rather be able to paint over the glue if that is making sense to you guys. Um, so that's why I put it together first. And also make sure that I get a really nice fit by putting it together first because sometimes paint can go over the edge and, you know, like on the sides. Most of the time I will sand that back off so that I don't have that you know, paint that's scooched over the edge, but I don't want to have to dig it out of the places that make the puzzle. So there we go. All right. We are looking good. We've got about 10 minutes. Does anyone have any other questions? Um, I'm just going to scroll back through to see your questions. Okay. We got the paint question with the black. Uh, I think we're looking pretty good. I'm so excited to come and share with you guys this week. It's just been a really fun week and I think we need to just keep exploring and learning and having fun with all of the fun different ways that we can do finishing. Um, there's just a lot to do, right? So many different things and we like to play with all of the ideas. And I know that we all stitch different things. So the things I'm striving to bring to you are things that are basics that you can build your own personal style around and show your, you know, your vibe, whether it's mid-century modern, whether you like prim, whether you like, you know, really kitschy and seasonal, things that are going to work for all of that is kind of the, the goal here. So Crystal's saying, is there one of the paints that you would consider a black brown? Let's get the chips or the paintbrushes. My rusty piece back there. All right. Let's come over here. We've got a lot of options. There's like 42 different ones. This color is the color I was telling you is um, black velvet. Let me show you the two blacks. See, it's hard to tell when is this, but this is black velvet. This is little black dress. I think that visually I can see that black velvet has a um, little more of a, yeah, see it's a softer black and that's just black black. That's the difference there. This piece is brown, so that's the brown. Here we go, let's look here. What are we, what are we looking for? We're looking for a black brown. Mm. Did I not, this is weathered wood. This is weathered wood. That's black. This is more gray. This is old school. Whoops, not even in the thing. That's more of a black gray. I think your closest to a black brown is going to be weathered wood. So that's black and that's, this is weathered wood. I want to get it out of the shiny. Let me just double check in here the rest of you all. Yep. That, it's got a lot of brown to it, but I would say weathered wood would be your black brown. I hope that answers the question on that. And then Teresa says, when 
you paint the designs with tiny holes do you paint inside there like the pocket pad or where it looks like lace and scallops um no i don't now though when i get you can and that's one of the nice things I loved about this paint as well is that this particular chalky clay based paint was sticking to the laser burnt edges really, really well. So you could paint. And if you're going to paint around, well, let's put it this way. All right. This one, I did paint the edges. And when I paint edges, there we go. What I do is I hold the piece in the middle like this and I paint all the way around the edge. Right. Then I can set it down and paint the top. And go from there. So if you do paint inside there, you're going to get a little brush and just hold the middle and then paint all the way around any inside with the little brush. If you don't want to do that and you're trying to keep paint from getting on the edge of it, the round foam um, sponges, you can take those and pounce the paint onto the top. It'll also create some really cool texture and that'll help keep it off of the edges. But if it gets onto the edge at all, I love to distress so it's distressing is my game. So that's what I do. I just distress and take it right off of the edge. All right, good. I'm glad that the paint comparisons work. We'll be able to keep doing it. The circle risers are, of course, I'm not gonna have a measuring thing around here somewhere. I wanna say four and a half and three, but let me get a tape. The largest one, the diameter is four and a half, yes. And that's the diameter of the inside round circle, the layer on the top, because we've got the scallop layer on the bottom. And the smaller one is three, three and three quarters for the smaller one. I can do a smaller, I can do bigger. I just grabbed two sizes to begin with for now. They seem to work pretty good. And then like I was saying, this, this scorn you, five inches. And that's how that is sitting on it to give you an idea from that. It's a pretty big one. What do you think? Is that a good size? Is that working? Easy enough to make more, that's for sure. Um, the seasonal courier piece, I had an idea about, I'll show you. <laughs> so we do the bender boards. This was kind of an idea I was having and I'm batting around because it will fit on the tall one. And what I wanted to do then was we have a four seasons pack of these where the cutout on the top for spring, it's a flower. For fall, it's a leaf. For summer, there's a sunshine cutout. And for winter, there's a mitten. I was thinking that the dude here, this is just my first thought. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure on this yet though. I was thinking he would be really pretty on here painted in a really pretty, with a really soft um, faux finish background. And I wanted to pick up some of Robin's, I think it's called thatch, her thatch fabric for behind it and just make it bright and fresh. And then the cutout at the top would be a flower and I could put the flower off the sides. I don't know, what do you think? Is that a fun idea? Cause then we could make a four seasons pack of the benders so we could use them for other things as well. And I just think these would look nice and fresh on that. What thoughts? <laughs> As I sit here and think out loud with you guys. Okay. The little hoops, Jessica. They have not been in the shop yet because they need two more sizes. And I'm working on those two more sizes. Those little hoops had just come as extras with the everything board. But they need to be two sizes bigger so that we can have a big one um, similar to the perpetual paddle size 
So it's kind of still in development. I was trying to get in in there and I didn't make it because I want to make sure I have the right size for those. It's a little different. It has to be a little bit bigger than the regular circles because the inside is what I want to be the right size for fitting um, circle finishes and allowing us to have still a mat board on it and having the hoop frame that goes around there. So I'm working on the final size for that. I mean, it's not hard. It's just I have to make sure I have the time to sit down and make sure I've got the right sizes before I to Like a tulip flower. Would you like, you know, I, I had listened to, I better make sure it's time. Okay, we got to get over to Nicole's. But I had listened to um, Robin on Fat Quarter Shop, and she said that tulip is her favorite flower too. So maybe tulip is good. I'm going to take off because, you guys, we got to get over to Nicole's. It's been an hour, so we it's 8 o'clock. Nicole Spore on YouTube. Let's go watch Alicia and Nicole over there. I want to thank you all for joining me here tonight. If you're catching this on the replay, head over to Nicole's channel to catch the interview on the replay. But I'll see you next week and um, be looking for a, a vlog coming up. Bye, guys.